um, in reading that this morning. And I've got a quick question for you. This is was a quiz question that we had over Christmas time in our house. Um, and the, the question is this, what do thousands of people end up doing 12 days after New Year's Day? What do thousands of people end up doing um, 12 days after New Year's Day? Now, some of you are perhaps saying um, taking the decorations down, because traditionally, I think that is about 12 days after Christmas Day that that happens, but that's not the one I'm looking for. Um, actually, the answer is, according to the question card that I had, um, giving up on the resolutions. That was what it said, giving up on the New Year's resolutions. And a lot of people tend to do it about 12 days after New Year's Day. Actually, taking your decorations down is 12 days after Christmas Day, isn't it? That's right. Got that wrong. But anyway, 12, about 12 days after New Year's Day is when most people give up on the New Year's resolutions. Um, and, and it's easy to fail New Year's resolutions, isn't it? I wonder if any of you have made any and broke them already. I don't know. But um, it's, we, we sometimes do and then um, make them. And then, and then we can end up feeling even worse afterwards if we fail to do them, if we fail to, to keep the resolution. So I've got an idea this year. Um, this isn't going to be a long message. I just want to share a couple of stories with you and, um, and reflections on, on something I've been thinking about. But the idea is this. Instead of making a big promise this year, um, a big New Year's resolution, um, that, that we try doing little things, that we try doing little things, little things in the course of the year that can have a big effect. Now, I began thinking about this, um, uh, this whole theme, just before our Carols by Candlelight service. You heard Chris and Yvonne talk about the Carols by Candlelight service before, and what, um, uh, you know, it turned out to be a good service, and a lot of people got really blessed from it. What no one knew that afternoon, nobody knows, apart from um, me and my family uh, here, um, and our neighbours, is that when I went out to, um, I was going out that night, and uh, that afternoon to go down and get ready for the carol service. And uh, when I went down, I got into the car and I started to back out as usual um, from there. And my car just, just slightly, I, I felt something just touch. And the next door neighbor had um, parked their car out just across our drive with their car. And I hadn't seen and I just felt something and I thought, I've just hit my neighbor's car. I drove back forward, I got out, I went round to have a look. It was dark, so I couldn't see anything much. And I'm looking, I'm thinking, oh my word, I've had an accident, I've crashed his car. And, um, I, but I had a look and I couldn't see anything at the time. So I was needing to get down to the service. I was conscious that I was running a little bit late. I went and knocked on the neighbor's door and I said to him, look, I've just backed up, I've touched your car, I, I don't think there's much damage, uh, I don't think there's any, I can't see any damage, but it's dark, we won't know till light, I've, I've got to go just now, but I'll be, you know, you know where I live, <laughs> and I'll be back in a bit, and, um, and we'll come and see you then, and we'll just uh, see, but if you see anything, I'll sort anything out that needs to be sorted out then. And then I had to get back in the car and go down to the carol service. And I was feeling really, really bad, really awful about this. Um, but, um, and in the end, just to um, let you know, there was no damage at all. It just clipped it and it was, there was nothing. It was all fine and the neighbor was fine and it's all been great. But the, this is what happened. Um, it made me just think about the fact that um, that could have been a lot worse, not with a car, but it could have been um, a kid. I didn't pay enough attention when I got in the car and I was backing out that particular time. I didn't pay enough attention. And say I had hit a child, what could the ramifications of that been for that child and for my life? The whole kind of thing just struck me and I began to reflect and think on that about how, well, how careful I need to be, um, but how little things can change life so quickly. And I thought about 2020 and how little things have changed people's lives so significantly. An MP losing a job because they just broke a 
COVID rule and lockdown rule or something to go somewhere and someone spotted them and they would lose the job over it. Or someone sent a text or posted something on Facebook and then realised that actually it wasn't the best thing to have done and deletes it, but it's too late, someone's seen it and it's there and there's an uproar and it hits all the press and the person loses their job. Um, little things, little moments that can have a massive and a significant effect on people's lives. And they can just be small things. Um, what about in people's lives, a moment of anger where someone lashes out and it can affect their life because they become an abuser. They become someone who has done something has harmed somebody in some way. And, and the ramifications of that can be quite big. What about um, just, just looking at your phone in a car um, just for a second, because you just wanted to check it and you have a, 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 an accident or knock someone down. The, the little things that can happen in moments, and these are all negative things and, and, and bad things at the moment that I'm, I'm picking up on. Of course, there's good things as well, and we'll get to that. Um, 2020 was a significant year in many ways. Um, and of course, the coronavirus would have started off with someone doing something. We don't know exactly how it started, but someone doing something. And the ramifications of it have affected the whole world in an amazing way, um, in, for, the, for the worse, uh, in terms of what's happened. A lot of people are saying good riddance to 2020. There's been a lot of little, um, little clips um, coming up on, on our phones and things like that, saying good riddance. Here's one that was, has come up. This was one of my favourites. There's been lots of positive things too in 2020. It's not all been bad as we reflect back. Um, I mean, some people in our church have had new babies in 2021, so they're going to remember that for a positive thing, um, clearly. Uh, there's been the family time we talked about earlier um, and things like what Eleanor and Jörg, when we saw them dancing, there's uh, pollution rates have come down for the time being in, in a lot of places in the world. Some of you have seen the pictures of the difference in, in the smog and so on. So there's been some good things, but also there's been some very small things that have happened that started small, that were seemed insignificant and have become really big. So, for example, we've celebrated um, Captain Tom Moore who just decided to go and walk in his garden and um, and just try and raise a bit of money for, for charity and it was a simple thing he was just going to walk around his garden a few times and get this bit of money and what has happened is he's ended up uh, raising 38 million for the NHS he's ended up um, with uh, breaking two world records having a number one single and um, and he was knighted um, to Captain Tom Moore so it, it, that small thing that he did as as the, has grown to massively and had a big impact, impact on his life and many others. Um, and Amory Plaz um, started clapping, just decided to um, to stand outside a house and got a few friends or neighbours to let's cut the NHS. And look what happened with that for two months. She had everybody out on the doorsteps um, clapping around the country. And we were out as well, clapping on our doorstep. And we don't even know her. But the a simple thing that she just started and just did had such big um, ramifications. There was a guy, um, Black Lives Matter was a, 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 was on our radar last year, a big time, a lot of things. We've got footballers kneeling down, haven't we? Um, just for um, uh, racial equality and so on um, before games. And Patrick Hutchinson, uh, Black Lives Matter activist, um, hit the news headlines for carrying an injured white man to safety at a London 
demo. Now, no one would have, you know, he wouldn't have, at the time, he was just helping an injured man. He wouldn't have thought it would have hit the press like it did and his name would become someone who would be all over the place because of it. It was a simple act of kindness in a situation and became such a big symbol of how we should be caring for one another, whatever colour or race, and however our feelings, the way that we should be with one another. It was a really positive thing to come out of 2020. My point is these small things can have big impacts and little things can make a big difference. And in the Bible, we see it too. In the story that we just read, um, what about if um, when Andrew heard in this story, when Andrew heard that Jesus was coming by, what if he hadn't have gone and followed him? If he hadn't gone along, he wouldn't have necessarily become one of Jesus' most loved disciples. And um, what about the fact that if he hadn't gone and told his brother and brought him along as well, we might never have had Peter. Now, I know we can get into a debate about whether these things would have happened anyway and whether it was all predestined and preordained and so on. But you get my point. Um, Andrew went and followed Jesus and then he became one of the, the close disciples. And then Peter, who's got loads of stories in the Bible about him, um, went along because Andrew went and told him. He would never have guessed. We would never, you know, that, that might never have happened had Andrew not gone and mentioned to him about that. Yvonne went and told her friend about it. Who knows if she will now end up becoming a Christian? You know, someone told Tara and Tara came to church and became a Christian. Keely is in our church and someone in our church told her and she came along and, and ended up becoming a Christian. And, and these people might never have known, might never have had the, the destiny, their eternity destined for heaven with God and to know him now and be part of family if it wasn't for just someone sharing that text or, or mentioning it to them. Small things, little things can make a big difference in many, many different ways. Looking in the Bible as well, the little boy who gave his little, um, his, his five loaves and his two fishes, um, if he hadn't have had his, his, that with him that day, if he hadn't have shared them with the disciples that day, we'd have never had that story of the feeding of the 5,000. If Zacchaeus hadn't climbed the tree to see Jesus at that moment, we might never have had him he might never have got Jesus to his house having a meal and it changed his life significantly just that one moment um was was massive for him little things can make a a, a big difference whatever 2020 was like for you um and whatever our past before that it's no point living with any regrets if it was negative. What matters is the future and the positive action that we can take going forward. Um, it's about positive action, not past failures or, or, or regrets. The choices that we make this year in 2021, the little things that we do or say can make a big difference and have a big impact. And my, the, the thing that really um, I wanted to kind of bring this together with was this, what small things could we do? What small things could I do? What small things could you do? What small changes could we make for the better this year? Are there things in your life that you could just tweak a little bit, not make a big resolution about and commit and all that kind of thing but just try and change a bit without making massive steps that you're going to fail at that could make a difference in some way i'm thinking about things i was trying to think of five things for five minutes was something i just came up with um and it might just be one of these it might be all of these but this is only an example you can think for yourself but i wondered about for someone who finds it really difficult to, to pray and spend time with God because of the busyness of life or whatever, maybe to try and commit to five minutes of prayer, to try and say, I'm going to try and take five minutes out of my day to just pray and find a time in the day where you're going to spend five minutes. Now, some of you will spend longer than that. You, you'll spend an hour or two, you know, but other people, it might be 
you know, you might already have a regular time of prayer, but for those that struggle with it, to, to take five minutes just to be with God in your day, it's only a small amount of time, but don't try and start with a 15 minute or a half hour time of prayer as your New Year's resolution that you're probably going to fail on. Just do five minutes. That benefits our spiritual health. What about five minutes to read the Bible? Naomi talks about reading the Bible and how it's helped her and, and blessed her. Um, do you know that the whole chapter of John, uh, John chapter one, you could read that. Um, I timed it last night, how long it took to read through. Just thinking it through and reading it through, it took about three minutes. So you could read a chapter of the Bible in five minutes easily. Um, most chapters in the Bible easily. So what about a commitment to, um, or, a, or, or to try and just make a tweak and change to read a chapter of the Bible each day? Um, what about five minutes exercise? I know some of you do these things. What about five minutes exercise if you don't normally do any exercise? Um, you could even kill two birds with one stone and go for a prayer walk for five minutes. Just walk out your house and down the street and round the corner and back again and just pray while you go. Then you're exercising and you're praying at the same time. But physical health, um, walking, Jürgen Eller were dancing. I know Dan Easton started with just a, a, a little run that he was doing and he's ending up running marathons now. Um, you know, Dan, Dan's really impressed us all. We've said before as staff and how he, but it all started with him just going for a run and then he just tips up. Now we're not all going to end up being marathon runners and we don't have to, but a bit of exercise for our physical health. What about five minutes to be a blessing to someone? Um, a call, a text, a card. We've talked about this kind of thing before. And, and I know we can say, oh yeah, it's the usual examples, but they can make a really big difference to encourage and thank people. You know, after that carol service that I talked about earlier, a number of people sent um, little text messages um, or, or emails to me just thanking uh, myself and Aaron for that carol service that we we did. And it was so encouraging, um, getting the one from Chris and Yvonne was so encouraging, actually, um, to, to get those messages. And especially after what had happened, because no one knew I'd had that little bump and I was all upset about that when I did the service. But it was so, it was helped to lift me afterwards. It makes such a difference. I know I've made a call to someone and I've heard about three or four weeks later that, oh, it made their week. You've given them a call. It made their week. It can make such a difference to people. We don't always know it. A little thing can make a big difference. Um, and... Um, and maybe buying a little gift for somebody, a, a bunch of flowers or a, a little present or even even committing to just do something like that once a month, five pounds a month um, to someone. I know that's too much for some people, but for others it isn't. But just to say, I'm going to either give someone some cash or buy something for someone each month. Just going to do that, a little change um, to, to do that. These are little things, but can make a big difference to people. And I just... I don't know if you noticed at the beginning, I had um, a beard at the beginning, and I don't now. Um, it's a little difference. I'll tell you the difference that that's going to make. My wife will kiss me again now. Big difference for the better. So um, so that's a change. Um, but little things, and that's what I want to encourage you with in 2021. Um, we're not going to come out of this with anything dynamic and new. There's no amazing um, vision for 2021 that's going to transform and turn our church upside down. Um, but I think there's little things we can begin to do this year, both as individuals and as a church, that can, that can make a big difference, even though they're only small things. Pray for our leadership team as we look to take the church forward this year. Pray for us as a church that we can begin to make significant difference this year. Um, but it won't be necessarily in big ways, but just in small ways as we look to uh, draw people close to Jesus and to draw closer to him ourselves. 2020 is gone for better, for worse. 2021 is here now. What will we make of it? Little things matter let's um pray together shall we lord jesus i i do pray that as we move from one year to to this next 
um, that Lord, we uh, we will know your um, we will know your presence with us, and um, that Lord, you will help and guide us in the small things as well as the big. Lord, may we make good choices this year, choices that will be pleasing to you. Help us to change little things that can help us in our relationship with you. Help us to change little things that can help us be more of a blessing to others. Lord, help us to be close as a church family. And help us, Lord, to make you known to others. And help us to bring glory to you through our own lives and the life of our church in 2021. Amen. You know, at the end of John chapter one, there's the story of um, Nathaniel coming to Jesus as well. And um, when Nathaniel comes to Jesus, I'll just read you this end bit. Um, Jesus said to Nathaniel, Nathaniel says, how, how do you know me? And Jesus answered, I saw you when you were still under the fig tree before Philip called you. Then Nathaniel declared, Rabbi, you are the son of God. You are the king of Israel. And Jesus said, you believe because I've told you, I saw you onto the fig tree. You will see even greater things than that. He added, I tell you the truth, you shall see heaven open and the angels of God ascending and descending on the Son of Man. My prayer for this year for us is that um, we will see even greater things this year than last. And let's pray into that um, together as we move forward that however tough it is 2021 we'll see some great things happen God do some great things maybe that paper chain that Aaron was talking about at the beginning of the service can um, can we can share some things from that um, that God has been doing wouldn't that be wonderful